Hello friends, welcome to Repurpose My Way. I'm Shelly. Today we're going to do over this little shelf uh, hanger for the wall, some wall decor, and we're going to make it into a primitive style. So originally this was a dark stained piece and I had taken a bunch of different uh, thrift flips that I did and took them outside and painted them black as a base coat. Now, as a resist to the paint that I'm going to put on top, I'm using some Vaseline or petroleum jelly. Uh, this is from, I think this is from Walgreens, doesn't really matter, the kind, the brand, any kind of petroleum jelly will give you a resist to your paint. So I'm going to take this Fusion mustard colored paint and I'm going to paint right over where I had added the Vaseline. So you want to put that in spots where it's going to naturally look like it has uh, distressed. It's going to give it a distressed look. So naturally where the paint would come off. So of course I did it around the edges, a little bit in the middle here and there, and I did one coat over everything to start with. And as I put it on here, you can see what it looks like with the one coat. You can see where it's resisting that paint. Now I decided in looking at it that I wanted a little bit more color where the color was going to stay so I did a second coat. So fusion paint is a two-in-one paint so it has a sealer in it so this proves to be difficult to take the paint off later on but I'll show you how I kind of counteract that. So I'm going to set that aside to dry and work on another part of this little shelf have a bunch of these candles and I pick them up everywhere. Yard sales, the free area at my dump, uh, people give them to me, um, you know, all kinds of stuff. So I had this one and I want to put it in the little pocket of the front of that little wall decor that I have that I'm working on. So the metal piece in the front is sticking out too far. So I kind of push that up a little bit to make it so it would fit nice and tight. And also I wanted to check it to make sure that it worked and the bulb worked. I do have extra bulbs, but I wanted to make sure that worked. So before I put too much work into it, you know, I mean, I have my grubby mix out and I added a coat of Mod Podge onto the sleeve of that little light. As you can see here, I put a nice good coat of it. And now I'm just taking my grubby mix down in the description will be the playlist of all my grubby mix stuff, how to make it, what I use it on. This is a cardboard sleeve that goes on that light, so it it took it just fine as long as you don't absolutely drench it in, in glue and make it soft. And uh, then once I let it set, set aside for maybe 15 minutes or so, and it was a pretty warm day, it dried up pretty quick. So I added a coat of Mod Podge over the top of the grubby mix. I just dab it on and then just kind of brush it back so it's not too thick because it'll take forever to dry if you put it on too thick. Uh, I have this little star here that's also going to go on my shelf. So I wanted to grubby that up as well to make them all match. I didn't think the burgundy color of the little star would look very well with the mustard paint. So I just grubbied that up as well. So now that my little shelf is dry, I'm trying to take off the extra, the paint where all the petroleum jelly was. And because again, because it's a sealer, I let it sit too long and it sealed right up and I couldn't just rub it off. So I took my hair dryer and heated up that petroleum jelly and it heated up enough so that it would loosen up that paint and I could just kind of wipe it off. Now there were a few spots that just didn't want to come off at all so I went back with my sandpaper and I just hit it with my sandpaper and did that. But for the most part the heat gun heating up that uh, Vaseline did a pretty good job in getting that paint off.
once I was happy with the distressing, I took my antique wax and put a coat on of that to richen up that color of paint. I think it looks really good with this antique wax on it. It gives it a nice dark antique look and it goes very well with this mustard colored paint. So I'm just showing you the difference here. The one on the right, of course, is the one with the antique wax and the other one is before I do that. And I did the whole thing all over with the antique wax. Now I'm gonna screw in this little light and add this to the middle of this little shelf here. And I just drilled a little hole on either side and then put a screw in on the either side to just to hold it in there so it wouldn't fall over. And that worked really well. I'm then gonna add my sleeve, my grubbied up sleeve back onto the light and put the bulb back in it. And that slides right down in there and looks so good. It gives it such a cool look. I'm gonna take this twig vine. I think I got this from factorydirect.com long time ago. And it was on a some kind of a special because it can be kind of expensive. So I just gonna cut off a piece so I have a little circle. I'm gonna make a circle out of it. And it's wrapped in wire. So I cut through most of the twigs with my scissors and then I had to just, yeah, use my wire cutters to cut the rest of it off. And so then I took some of my floral wire and I want those two ends to come together and make a complete circle. So I just use that floral wire to wrap around it and get it nice and tight. And it also gives me a place to hang it. I added a thrifted little hook to the top of my wall decor so that I could hang my little star and my vine. And I added a little bit of floral wire to my grubby star and hung that on there got that all on it looks good and then i added a bow and that's pretty much it except for the greenery that i'm going to add to the middle and then i will change it out um, and put in some pit berries so that you can see what it looks like with the greenery and the pit berries so you can see the difference between the two i think they both look great So this next project I'm going to show you is just me adding my labels to some homemade uh, or bulk made, I guess I should say, bulk made soaps that I purchased for my booth in um, Bridgeton, Maine. So I wanted to put some yummy smelling things in there and one of the things that I bought was these soaps in bulk. So this one is black raspberry vanilla. It's really, really pretty. Let me take one out. I wish we had Smell-O-Vision because you would just love the smell of these. Okay, got one out with the purple on it. This one has a little bit of purple. This is the black raspberry vanilla. It smells delicious. These are 4.5 4 ounce bars and they're nice and thick. So um, I have that one. I have oatmeal, milk, and honey. This one is really cool because it's got all the little pieces of like oatmeal in it. So this one again is 4.5 ounces. It's a really nice, nice size soap. Fits in the hand good. So 
of that one. And that smells really good too. And this is Asian tea and let me see. Asian tea blossom. This one's really pretty because it's got the pink. This one's got it all through. Asian tea blossom. So another one, 4.5 ounces, really nice. If you search around the internet, you can find, you know, all kinds of stuff to do that with. It's an initial cost, of course, just like anything, but, um, you know, once it starts getting out there, people start buying it. So in the, one of my booths, I have these. I purchased some boxes off from Amazon. I'll put a link down in the description. They're perfect. You just gotta put them together. Perfect for the 4.5. You know, you'll have to, if you did something like this, you'd have to measure your bars to make sure that this is gonna fit. So it has a little window. I like it with the window, because then when I drop my, my little, um, my soap in there fits just perfectly and you can kind of see what it looks like in the window and then just close the top and it fits fits great now the thing that I need to do or I needed to do is make some labels so what I did was I took printer paper and I put it in some coffee grunge, some tea. I don't know, just a bunch of, cut my coffee grunge has the tea in it. And then I took some of my grubby mix, my cinnamon and um, you know, all my, my instant coffee mix and all that. And I kind of sprinkled it on the paper as it was drying. So it would leave little splotches of little, if you can see the little specks just kind of left specs. I came with a, out, came up with a name, something kind of primitive that would match my booth. So I did the old crow soaps with a little crow. And then I took, um, each one has a different primitive saying. So this one's farm stand, black raspberry and vanilla that I did for that one. I came up with that myself. The black raspberry and vanilla is the, the, flavor or fragrance of the soap. Uh, there are certain regulations that you have to have, so you have to make sure that you put, you know, if it's gluten-free, vegan-friendly, and cold-pressed. So I put those in there, and then you have to put your ounces and your grams of what they are, and you can figure that out pretty easily. And usually if you buy it from a company, it'll have all that information for you. And that's pretty much all you need on your soaps. Um, I was kind of amazed. I thought that you had to have all the ingredients and everything, but it says you do not have to. So the next one I did was Homestead Oat Milk Honey, Oatmeal Milk and Honey. So I have the Farm Stand, I have the Homestead, and I have, do do right here, another page, Pantry Sweet Tea and Herbs. And all of them have the Old Crow Soaps, the, the gluten-free, vegan-friendly, cold-pressed, the ounces, and the little the little uh, crow on them. So I thought it was a cute, primitive little um, labels to put on them. And some of them, of course, they're all going to be different because, of course, they were tea-stained. I Once I tea-stained them, I let them dry in the oven, very low temperature. I think it was like 200 for a little bit and just watched it and made sure they didn't burn up. But um, that dried them really quickly. And so I made two pages of them. So when I need to, this is gonna give me six, I believe it's six, maybe 10 uh, labels of each kind. And then um, I can cut them out, which is what I've started to do here, and then put them on my boxes. So this is the sweet, are the Asian tea blossom that I just put in here. So I'm going to cut out 
the sweet tea and herbs. And then I just have, so I have my little label that I cut out. I try to do it really nice and neat, which that one doesn't look all that great. And then I just use Elmer's glue, stick glue. And I make sure I get it all over that really well. All over the edges. And then I just take it and put it on sure it stays down really well and then there's my soap old crow soaps and then I have some tape I like to put a little tape on the edge just so they don't open up and fall out but they can still smell them through the box they're very fragrant go and that way if you know they throw them in their basket it won't fall out so I try to put a nice picture of what your soap is going to look like in the little window and then the cool little label you need to look up how if you're going to do something like this what you need on your labels and you'll be very surprised at how simple and easy you got to have a name what it is and then like I said I put the gluten-free vegan friendly cold pressed and the ounces and that's all I did and the hardest part I think was just sizing these the right size that I wanted for my box so I think that's perfect for that I also forgot to mention that when I made these I ran them through my printer to make copies of it um, on this paper that I had done up and it did not like it because it had all these little kind of granules on it and stuff and it wasn't happy with it but it did go through now I have a printer copier um, printer combination so I once I got them printed I just put them in my little copier every time I need some and it's already tea stained it's already done and unless I change the name or um, change something the size or whatever um, it should be just good the way it is. So uh, if I change anything, I will have to put, um, you know, put another one, do more tea staining and do another one through my printer. But I just wanted to show you that. I think they came out really cool and rustic looking and I like the, the design of it. It's simple, it's easy to read for the most part and it just makes it look like a cool primitive primitive thing for the home. Whether you take it, leave it in the box, take it out, whatever. They're pretty cool. I also wanted to show you guys this oak stand. It's made out of oak. It's beautiful. 
Now, somebody had taken this to the dump and set it aside because the doors uh, were coming off on the hinge side. They were um, loose, and if you pulled on it, they'd pull right apart. Somebody had tried to fix it with some nails, and I pulled out... The, that nail works really good in there. But I pulled out these, and I re-glued and put it together the best that I could on that one and then put the put it back on. Somebody had already replaced the bottom. And then this one, same thing. They had nailed in the corners. This one I took out and glued it really, really good on both sides and put it together. And this is nice and sturdy now. I gotta get my, my hinges a little bit tighter. But it closes well. And it's a beautiful, beautiful piece. The drawer, I put a little bit of soap underneath so it would slide a little bit easier. It wasn't bad before, but just trying to make it glide really nicely. I did put paper, some decoupage paper in here. Uh, this is from Jamie Ray Vintage, I believe, but I think it was discontinued. The other thing I did, it, did at my husband's uh, suggestion is I found, I cut some little pieces and put them in the corners like this and glued them so that, um, because it felt a little like it was kind of coming apart. Let me show you that corners. See how it kind of looks like a little bit, like it's coming apart, so I glued that. Probably could put a couple little nails in there too if I wanted to, to make sure, but I think that glue is gonna stay really well. Um, try not to drag it across the top. So I didn't paint under this paper because I wanted it to come out looking a little bit darker and uh, aged, which I think it did. Uh, I didn't do anything else to it, but Mod Podge seal the top. That's all I did. And that slides so easy with one hand. And then the top is beautiful. Somebody did take nails and nail down the top. And I don't think that was how it was done originally. Somebody did that probably because it was coming apart. But it's gorgeous. Nothing had to be done to this, but the gluing... I did the paper on the inside because it was some kind of weird dark stain and I could have painted it, but I thought it would look prettier if when you open it, it's got that pretty paper in there. And I, that's the only thing I had and it matches okay. I mean, it looks all right. Uh, and like I said, I glued the edges, put the paper in, put some soap on the glides and then all I did was wipe it down. I had a couple little scuff marks down here which you probably can see here, and then there was one up here, um, and then there was down here, I guess, on the door. And all I took was my hemp oil, and I just rubbed it on there, and it darkened those up just a little bit so that they didn't stand out. And this is a gorgeous piece. Beautiful antique oak. Uh, I can't find any markings on it. But I'm going to put this in my booth for sale and see if I can sell it to somebody that will appreciate it. And I don't think it needs to be painted whatsoever. It's gorgeous. It's just gorgeous. And I'm so glad I could save it because it was at the, it was set aside at the dump to be thrown. And um, I just happened to be there right when they dropped it off and I ran over and scooped it up. I hope you enjoyed my primitive project today. Let me know, would you use the greenery or the pit berries in that wall decor? And also, I hope you liked how I did up my soap and my label and the cute little cabinet. I didn't do any painting to it, but I definitely added a little pizzazz in the drawer and I think I just saved another super cool old piece. If you haven't already, don't forget to like and subscribe and hit that bell for notifications of future videos that I'll be putting out. You don't want to miss a thing. Thanks for watching. Have a great day.